All right, so in this example, ladies and gentlemen, um, again, all we're simply going to do is just solve using completeness square. So if you guys follow along my steps, the first step that I always told you guys to do is just group the first two terms. The two terms that we're going to group is going to be how we're go what we're going to create as our perfect square trinomial. So hopefully the first, two first step you guys can always do. The second step, which in this case we don't have to do, is to factor out a common factor so a is equal to 1. But you guys notice that there already is a nice little 1 there. So I don't have to factor out any number. Now remember, we're not, even though I know x's are common, we don't need to factor out the x because we're trying to create a perfect square trinomial. So we're going to keep the x's in there, but we only want to factor out so a is going to be 1. But in this case, a is 1, so we're good. The next step is to find the value b that completes the square. That was on your homework, right? That's what we practice. So in this case, I have negative 14 divided by 2 squared. Again, following the order of operations, negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7. Negative 7 squared is going to be a positive 49. So then I add 49 inside the parentheses. But since I'm adding it on the left side of the equation, I need to also subtract it on the left side of the equation. Or you could add it to both sides. Since we're solving, that's, a, that's an OK method. But we didn't do that, if you guys remember last class period, because we were practicing writing it in vertex form. So I am just going to always do it the same way. That means whenever I add 49 onto one side, I'm going to subtract it on the same side. I'm just going to always be consistent with that, rather than doing it different ways for different types. OK, so now this can be factored down. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can always do the factored form of x plus b divided by 2 squared. However, ladies and gentlemen, this one doesn't have fractions. So hopefully you guys can recognize that, hey, that's a squared number. That's a squared number. What two numbers multiply to give you 49 and then add to give you negative, four, set, negative 14? Hopefully you guys understand that's the squared form. Or you could always just remember this and then always use that as your form. 19 minus 49 is going to be a negative 30 equals 0. So now that we have it in vertex form, right? if we were going to graph the quadratic, if you guys remember, especially for those of you that are working on that unit 2 review, if you're going to graph the quadratic, the vertex in this case would be 7 comma negative 30. And then you guys could graph the quadratic. right? Axis symmetry would be x equals 7. But we're not graphing the quadratic. What we're simply practicing in this case is solving for x. So you can see my variable x um, is being subtracted by 7. It's being squared. And then it's being subtracted by 30. So this, though, term is being squared. So the first thing we're going to undo is the subtracting by 30. So I'm going to add a 30 to both sides. So therefore, I have x minus 7 squared equals positive 30. Now I need to undo squaring. So to undo squaring, Frank, I do square root. Remember, whenever you introduce the square root, though, you have to include the plus or minus. Is 30 a square number? No, so I can't take the square root of 30. I want to see, is there any square numbers, though, evenly divided into 30? And unfortunately, no. So I'm just going to leave it as plus or minus the square root of 30. You're not going to, you cannot, do not simplify it to any kind of irrational numbers. Just leave it as a square root of 30. Then I'll add 7 to both sides. And my solutions are going to be x equals 7 plus or minus the square root of 30. And that's it. Done. Anybody have any questions on that?